my name is Adila. Welcome to Sina Daily new podcast show called Spot Matters, special edition Sea Game 32 Cambodia. Today we have special guests, two amazing person from different field. So today we have Bell and Brian over the call. Hi Brian, hi Bell. Hi. Um Christabel, uh welcome to our Spot Matters podcast. So this is a special edition. We're going to have a lot of special guests coming up, uh, including athlete, coaches, and the unsung heroes behind all the preparation for Sea Games Cambodia 32. Okay. So, Belle, um, how are you? <laughs> Good, Dila. <laughs> Long time no see. Yes. yes. Uh, let me introduce myself again. Okay. Kate, um, so, yeah, Dila, I. I bet you already know me. Yes. Okay. Yes. So my name is Christabel Chong. You can just call me Belle. Okay, but not Jingle Bell. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's your Instagram name. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so I've been working with ISN for around six years now. And then I'm, um, I can say like I'm specialized in para sports. Yes. yes. Yeah. So in a uh, simple term, it's like sports for uh, disabilities. Mm. Yep, yep, yep. So, yeah. Uh, so, how about your role in ISN as a dietitian, nutritionist? Uh, uh, how, how, okay. to, how to understand that part? <laughs> okay, so actually, I'm a sport dietitian. Okay. Yes, I'm a sport dietitian. So, we, we do have sport dietitian and sport nutritionist. Okay, so um, we, uh, our role is very, pretty similar, I can say. Yeah, just that maybe for a dietitian, we mm. handle more on clinical cases as compared to our sport nutritionist. Mm. Yep, yep. And then, yeah, and some more because I'm with para, so um, dietitian with para, uh, no, I mean, I mean like for, um, to handle para sports, we do need dietitian as compared to nutritionist because, mm. uh, you know, para, right, disabled, mm. Uh, athletes, they do have more complications as compared to able sports, mm. like which is like uh, the normal, the normal people. Yeah, because like you know, we have a lot of like disabilities. We have physicals. Okay, we have um, blind athletes, visual impaired, and mm. we also have like intellectual impaired. Yeah, so we do need dietitian, but yeah, I can say our role is pretty similar. We what we do is like still based on sport performance. Yep. All right, that's interesting. So we're gonna ask more. All right, now moving on to our next guest, Brian Nixon Lomas. He's a former diver and also my sport idol. <laughs> Considered as a like fangirling woman right now. So I'm gonna let him introduce himself, what you do doing right now, Brian? I mean, like the, the current activity after you retired from diving. Can you tell us about yourself and what you're currently doing with your life? <laughs> sure. Yeah, um, hi, semua. Salam sejahtera. Thank, first of all, uh, thank you for inviting me today. Um, uh, well, my, my full name is Brian Nixon Ana Lomas. I'm actually a former uh, national diver. Um, currently, um, I'm working overseas as a coach, as a diving uh, coach. So I've been here, um, I've been here for uh, three years. This is my like fourth, fourth year in in Kuwait. It's a nice place, but uh, it's a bit hot here, in the, especially in the summer. Now it's still okay. Um, so I'm 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 actually teaching um, small children. Um, I'm handling the. Um, you can say talent, talent uh, identifications program, TID program, mm -hmm. small development team in in Kuwait. Um, it's 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 a it's a nice place. It's a nice you know experience here coaching the um, Middle East kids, um, and also ha I have to learn you know some Arabic because uh, some of the kids, of course you you speak with them in English, but then some of the kids they don't really. Um, um, they don't really speak uh, in English that well, so you have to uh, learn some of the Arabic uh, Arabic words. All right, okay, that's cool. Everyone like has interesting hobby after retired, right? Um, so I'm gonna back on Bell. Okay. Um, 
So relate back to what you said just now, um, handling disabled athlete yeah, and compared yeah. to able body athlete. Okay. Um, have you experienced to you know work with um, diving team, and then um, how do you feel like connect with athlete relate to you know uh, your profession? <coughs> okay, work with diving team. Ah, huh? <laughs> okay lah, <laughs> because. Um, since I started working working in ISN, uh, terus I work with para athletes. So I've never really worked with able body sports before, and para we do not have diving. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, I I never I never been working closely with diving before. But yeah, I have colleague working with diving. So usually we chit chat a lot, and then we share our cases. Mm. So yeah, if let's say like um, what cases uh, do we have? Or head in diving, so okay, je. Oh, okay lah. Yeah. So for you, uh, Brian, from some sources I read, uh, is it true that you used to be a slango coach for diving team? Yeah, betul, betul, betul. Masa tu, um, I was actually doing my uh, degree in UM. I was doing sports science. So after I after I retired in 2013, I was still in UM. So uh, they offered me a part time uh, coaching role. Then Selango under the Persatuan, so so I, I, I was there for two years, two tahun saja until uh, 2015. Oh, because I, I had to left, yeah, because I had to, um, you, you know, I one of the reasons I, I I quit is because I went on to to do my masters in 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 Russia, so so that's why um, I left the team and. Uh, you know, doing and it started doing other things. Yeah. So that you didn't get offer from national team to you know to give your um, coaching lesson to youngster in Malaysia. So you moved to Kuwait. Uh, some some state yes national team the. Um, I mean, I'm I'm in contact with them. Um, also, they wanted me to come back, but. I always believe that um, because now I'm still con I'm consider myself still young, so I wanted to get as much experience uh, possible overseas. And then you know, once when when the time is right, when I feel like I'm I'm ready, then one day I'll come back to Malaysia and contribute back to you know to the uh, to the country and to the sports. Brian wanted to ask you guys. Yes. Right? What what yeah. makes you wanted to work in Middle East? Is it because of salary? Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> uh, not not really. Yeah. I mean, in terms of salary, it's not too high. It's not that low. Lah. So it's, it's it's quite okay. Uh, but yeah. because my my one of my senior was 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 here with my ex ex teammate, so they were here like a few years back. So they have a good reputation here. So when when they actually went back to Malaysia, Kuwait here, they wanted a coach. So they introduced. They actually introduced me, so and I, I just applied lah. I just applied uh, <laughs> I just applied and see, uh, and also I, I I was I was quite young, so I wanted to experience you know living in um, other countries lah in Middle East, try to see I mean see see if I like it or not lah. <laughs> but so after like three years, okay lah, okay lah. Okay, I, la. I it's quite it's quite fun. It's quite, uh, it's interesting because. Uh, not many things that you can do here because in, in Malaysia you can you can you can actually go um pergi hu hau ha sikit kan sometimes at night with friends but here they don't have you know they don't uh they don't have uh apa tu um benda-benda yang macam night clubs all that lah uh, entertainment it's last lah <laughs> muslim it's not muslim, muslim country, country. It's, a, it's a muslim country yeah, yeah it's like something maybe like similar like yeah. brunei yeah dubai is more open so here it's, uh, it's uh, yeah. just, uh, re uh, restricted yeah mm. so we know that diving is one of a niche spot in malaysia right so brian i want to ask you um how do you see um, diving sport growth in Malaysia compared to, you know, like currently you're coaching Kuwait? Mm -hmm. Like um, the growth of young talents and what do you think in, in your point of view? So I think this is interesting. But if you ask, you know, if you ask two groups of people, some of the people will say, ah, diving is going down. 
dia kata dah no improvement lah but if you ask another side ah uh, actually diving quite okay lah they you know other results in in the olympics especially the women teams ah not the men teams a bit hard lah but very very competitive uh, so there's always you know there's always say uh, the the group a will say ah uh, diving dah tak cukup ah uh, tak cukup pelapis you know especially the the men's the men's divers lah because they don't really uh, get good results in the past few years yeah, except for the Malaysia? women Yes, is uh, oh, yes in Malaysia. Malaysia. We're talking about yeah, Malaysia okay. scene lah, diving. Uh, so mm. so it's I mean if you if you ask me personally, um, in terms of results masih okay, tapi in terms of pelapis, uh, masih banyak lagi yang perlu di, uh, dibuat because we need we need more um pelapis, we need more Agreed. juniors, yeah, to to actually bring up the. The, the the sports especially men yeah true so like you start at young age as early as 14 so for uh, for for I, for parents who wants to nurture their children uh, maybe to join diving what's what's the offer I mean when do they need to start i mean uh what's the right path to start the, is, is that okay. need to go to the sports school or um direct coaching mm, i mean i i actually started diving when i was uh, nine years old actually mm -hmm. eight actually eight eight years old yeah i was in primary school so if the parents out there like they want to send their you know children to to take up diving um maybe i will share my stories like how i actually end up as a diver because uh, because at that time when i joined diving when i started you know learning diving i i have zero knowledge I didn't even know how to swim. I didn't. I didn't even know how to dive, lah. So it started at school. My coach came to my school for the uh, talent identification PID. program, mm. PID. So um, they were looking at the body structure, lah, like belly, punya tubuh badan. So I fit the diving, you know, structure. So my coach said, "Okay, Brian, you can come to this pool." Uh, and then after that, the my coach taught me how to swim, and then slowly uh, taught me how to dive. And then at the age of 12 years old, I got offered from uh, uh, Sekolah Sukan Bukit Jalil, the Bukit Jalil Sports School, because of my uh, achievement uh, in Sukan Malaysia, Sukma. Mm. So that's how after that 13 years old, I end up in Sekolah Sukan Bukit Jalil. So it's, um, you have to start with the local competitions first. Lah. Uh, sebab different sports that have different pathway, kan? Macam badminton, mungkin you have to go to the club first and then slowly you go to MSSS kan sekolah and then after that you go to MSSM maju sukan sekolah Malaysia and then slowly and then maybe you go to the state after pass state then you can be you know selected to the national team so line pathway lah huh. okay so I'm gonna ask to Bell yeah Bell so we know we have uh, Sukma like below and Sukma is sport at Sal right mm -hmm. usually from the primary school, secondary school, they're gonna compete in sport SL and then end up with SUMA and then fast forward big championship. Okay, for that category, um, do state provide dietitian? Mm. Because you know they like like Brian said, mm -hmm. oh, he don't know anything when he started the sport. Mm. So okay. like your part, okay. do you relate with that? Uh, group as well so you usually right um we, we do have a group of sports science team in the state yeah uh they are under msn actually yeah so it's like last time last time is uh, what we call satellite but now it's like under majlis sukan negeri so like for example in sabah we do have like a sports science team they have psychologists they have um, either dietitian or nutritionist okay so they cater specifically for um, Sukma athletes, unlike us. Like us, uh, we cater for national team. Yeah, so meaning that um, after athletes um, are being selected, chosen for joining the national team, they will masuk lah, masuk uh, Bukit Jalil here. Uh, for able body, masuk HQ. Uh, mm. And if let's say for para, so it's like um, we have a specialized center uh, for para athletes in uh, Kompleks Sukan Paralimpik in mm. Kampung Pandan lah. Mm. 
Ah uh, yes. So for us, we just cater for national national level. But um, for in my opinion, it's very very important to start early, start from the grassroots level to nurture them, to give them more knowledge instead of like just masuk national team baru belajar lah. Mm. Uh, it's very important. You you have to start from uh, at the very young age. Yep. Like what Brian mentioned just now, uh, they did have like TID. So yeah, you have to memang start from that uh, level already. Mm. Yep. So this is for Brian. Um, Brian. Um, so after you compete in Soma and then you move to like um, Sea Games and then the mm-hmm. biggest is Fina, right? So throughout the process, uh, can you share uh, with us about your experience uh, related to um, nutrition? I mean, your own nutrition, do you have like a specific diet for your own or you just follow what coach said or given? Because mm. okay, different maybe, yeah. individual is, uh, they have a different, uh, what? you know, needs, uh, needs different requirement, different requirement mm-hmm. and then even the physical also different because this, this person is small, this person is big. Mm-hmm. I think back then, back then, it's not very um, uh, comprehensive. Uh. What's, what's the word? Uh? I, I mean, I mean when, when I qualified for the my first Olympic Games, kan, 2004, I was 14. Back then, we, we don't really have a personal dietitian ataupun nutritionist with us, with the diving team. Cuma masa, masa tu dekat Majusukan Negara, we have like ada satu nutritionist dekat Majusukan yang mana saya rasa uh, a lot of sports will go to the same person and we check our body fat and then tell us what to eat what not to eat yeah. lah especially especially to uh, it's not every day it's not like now because now i heard that the dietitians will go to the canteen msn canteen and monitor what the athletes uh, take ataupun makan yeah. and consume yeah. but back then um, tak banyak macam tu not not much probably because diving that at that time we don't really have a good results Kan? But what what I remember in 2004, even after you know we, um, I qualified for the Olympics, tak ada personal uh, nutritionist or dietitian uh, uh, with us. Cuma cuma uh, they will advise us like two weeks before the competition. We will go meet the uh, nutritionist. Then they will tell us, okay, not to eat uh, roti canai ya, pukul 11 malam. You know, avoid eating <laughs> uh, apa ni makanan makanan berat. Avoid eating all these uh, oily food. Uh, Upon midnight, so that's um, that was it uh, last time, but now it's more you know, it's more um, it's more a team. So, every I believe that every sports have their own dietitian. Maybe back then, okay. um, it's not that comprehensive, <laughs> la. maybe due to mm. like a bad hour. Yeah, uh, I can say that during yeah. I was in mm. MSN 2012, I have no idea that your your yeah. your sport is exists mm-hmm. I mean like nutrition My dietitian profession. because mm-hmm. all 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 athlete knows after gym go to the mm-hmm. juice bar right <laughs> i think the juice bar still exists betul, betul. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the juice it's... bar and then the 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 person just asks uh, what kind of I think maybe want? maybe uh previously <laughs> sport science is still very new yes uh, mm. very it's new not a big thing again yes. sport science last time not a big thing like everybody asks sport science what is this and then after that they realize that okay actually sport science um, uh, you know, plays an important role to you know athletes' achievements. Yeah, yeah but now slowly we can see sports science is coming in. Mm. Yeah, it's helping helping out the team and coaches, athletes. That's right. I yes. can see that medicine is you know growing a lot of parts and evolving. Yes. Yeah, we can skills. see we can see the sports is evolving, mm-hmm. so we are improving. Mm. Yeah, because. Um, I want to share my experience in Paralympic because Bell also one of my dietitian during back in yeah. 2017. Yeah. Adila was my athlete before. <laughs> <laughs> I always make sure Bell check my supplement, you know. So every everything I I take I took for my body, I'm gonna make sure you check Mm-mm. what is the what's the inside of what's the ingredients Mm-mm. because you know we don't want. To been caught with what Adama sir? Yeah. Uh, Wada Wada, Wada Anti Doping Association. Yes. Have you related with that before? Like, 
checking your <laughs> checking other other yeah, I've that a few a few times pernah sangka ya Ah, tak, tak, tak. Clean, clean. Very clean. Very clean. <laughs> Brian, very clean. Yeah. From what we heard of Michael Park, uh, oh, mm. that one is one of the big issues. Yeah. I think that he, he, he took uh, marijuana after games. Huh? Like in 2012. Okay. Have you heard about the cases? No. That's a lot of But about, about that thing is you know, it's very sensitive topic because sensitive. we also experience it as a weightlifter, Ramai, in Malaysia, every game. I don't know why. So we're going to talk on that specific matter maybe later on the next episode. All right. So back at Bell. Mm, Bell, um, so you also mentioned you work with Para Team. Yep. And you also involved in every age of preparation when they're heading to the big games right yep okay guys we're gonna take break after this we're gonna come back with special guests today bell and brian we're gonna ask them more questions and throughout preparation sea games 32 cambodia Hi, welcome back. Thank you for sticking around and keep listening. So we're going to proceed uh, with more questions with our guests today, Belle and Brian. So right now, we're going to dive deep into preparation of 32, second, 32 Cambodia Sea Games. So this question is for Belle. Okay. So your part in Sea Games, can you share with us what you do in job scope? Because you mentioned you work with para mm -hmm, and yes. some with able body. Can yes. you share the preparation for the athlete with the nutrition? Okay. And then plus we just finish your fasting mind. Okay. Uh, uh, thanks Adila for the questions. So I think this is a very good question actually. Um, okay. So now just let me share like um, what, what we as a sport nutritionist or sport dietitian do with our team okay so I, I believe audience you might wonder like what we do besides just like uh, asking our athletes to diet or maybe mm -hmm. just advice on supplements no uh, actually we do more than that okay so um, what we do it's it's not just um, one week prior to the game so actually we have we are having the preparations uh, like even months or years ahead okay Ah, lagi awal lah kita buat preparation too. Mm. Okay, so um, for example, since uh, Brian is here, so we just take diving as an example. Okay, so um, pre uh, before the game, okay, uh, we will have like a certain phases we call. Uh, dalam different phases, we will need to have um, different target we say. Okay, mm. but of course we have to liaise dengan uh, athlete dengan coaches we have to depend on coach punya training program so currently uh, we consider as we can consider our athletes as um, uh, like in season okay we have like in season uh, competition phase mm. so for divers uh, of course we know they they will need to have a very good body composition okay because uh, diving is a very diving is a is an aesthetic sport okay so uh, you takkan lah nampang ada diver like um, off shape macam yeah, tu lah. Right? Yes, <laughs> yes, because it will affect because aesthetic sport, right? Yeah. yeah so more it will affect their their dive juga. Betul tak Brian? Yeah, betul right, betul right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, from our nutrition side, we will need to make sure that our diver has an um, ideal body composition. And then besides that, mm. uh, we will also need to uh, make sure they are having like a proper recovery so they can support their training. Because mm. the orang bukan train like just one session a day or a week. They even have like multiple training sessions per day. Yes. yes. That's why we have to make sure their body 
is able to recover before the next training session. Okay, so um, this is like during the uh, training phases. Okay, and then after that, uh, when we move on to like um, the the uh, uh, competition time. Okay, so competition time. So now uh, we know this year is in Cambodia. So Cambodia, uh, we will need to uh, prior to flying uh, to Cambodia, we will need to make sure we will need to survey first, assess okay um, the place the place okay Cambodia, and then is it um, uh, the weather of uh, the weather in Cambodia? Is it hot? Okay, is it like like very cold okay the weather is very important very crucial so now we know uh cambodia is is like panas lah mm. yes the temperature there we we have checked online is around like 38 degree it's like way hotter than malaysia and dry. yes and dry so this is one of the factor that we will really need to take into account okay so besides the weather another thing is food culture okay mm, so okay. i believe this is also very important aspect for us to know okay because we will know our athlete uh, when they are traveling to a new place okay can malaysia we love food uh, who doesn't love food right oh, okay yeah. yes so uh cambodia nanti you have to know our athlete they are not just staying there for like two three days like for vacation it's like some even stay up to two weeks yes. okay so we have to know the food culture there so will it cause like a uh, flavor fatigue Okay, mm. so yes, if let's say the orang dah bosan makanan kat sana, how? Okay, if let's say dah bosan, then then you will eventually lose appetite. Mm -mm. If you lose appetite, you didn't eat well, then your body can't recover. And if let's say your body is not uh, inadequate energy, okay, tak cukup energy, how can you compete well, right? Okay, so these are all the things that we really need to take into account. And then kat sana nanti, we will have a dietitian or nutritionist attached to the team. So this is what we really need to uh, jaga lah. Okay, mm. yeah. So kita, we will really need to work closely with the athletes. Yeah, and some more, okay, if let's say uh, we mentioned that uh, we are going to see games, this is a multiple sports event, event mm. sorry, okay. So it's not like just jaga satu spot je lah because uh, we do not have um, each uh, each nutritionist or dietitian attached to a single spot. Yeah. So it's like uh, we Emphasize. cater, yeah, we cater to all all the athletes. So it's like pool service, mm. yeah. So uh, from our side, we will also gonna tengok lah um, siapa yang uh, has a higher demand, uh, siapa yang maybe have. Uh, maybe some critical critical punya cases then mm. we will we will cater for that so what's the example like high demand and critical cases high okay how, how do you say it? yeah uh, how do i define like yeah, the high demand define that. okay so if let's say we are there with the team okay so what i can say like nutrition high demand is like okay maybe for uh, combat sports for weight category sports mm, yeah, yeah, yeah those sports young they need to weigh in Okay, so it's like if let's say your weight is not in the category, then you will be disqualified. So mm -hmm. that is really like we can say a very, uh, very critical for us. So we will need to really ensure uh, all the athletes are in category before their competition. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so we will need to play a lot of like strategy, uh, helping them to get in the weight category. Then after that, how do we play? with the strategy for them to like uh, recover back before the game yeah so that is like one one of the um high demand i can say mm. yep yep uh, it, it depends it depends sometimes yes we need to bring but uh <laughs> yang paling biasa weighing scale lah. <laughs> oh, weighing scale. <laughs> yeah weighing scale will be always with us do you bring food calib uh, Fat caliper? Uh, the skin for caliper. Yeah, skin for caliper. Still? It, it depends depends on our purpose. If let's say we, we do have the purpose, then yes, we will bring. Oh, yeah, okay, de so depend on the purpose. It so depends. That's, that's in the body composition part. So we're talking yes. about nutrition and dietitian part. Yes. So I remember it, my experience as an athlete. Whenever we go to the big games, they provide the foods. Right. So athletes cannot simply sneaking around with other foods. Like Maggie... 
sambal. <laughs> <laughs> so these things is always happen. In your mm-hmm. experience, have you caught any athlete like bring their own food in their luggage? Ah, uh, <laughs> of course. But okay lah. To to clarify, it, it's not like caught lah, kesian athlete. Uh. Like just now I mentioned, right? Um, uh, we have different food culture in different country, yeah. and then uh, some of us is like memang very like hundred percent Malaysian tongue. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So actually, for me, I will allow my athlete to bring like sambal even. I'm so sorry. Even <laughs> instant noodles. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. I, I know it's funny, but yes, I will yeah, allow. Yeah, yeah. True, yeah. True, true, true. But I will let my athlete know. Okay. Uh, all these like processed food, like instant noodles. Okay, yeah. it's not to replace your meal. Yes. Yes, but instead, it's just to help to stimulate your appetite, to enhance, to let you have have the the nafsu to eat back. You know because. <laughs> Adila, I, Adila and Brian, I think you guys are, uh, you guys really experienced before when you travel to a new country, and the food memang tak ngam your taste. Yeah. You will really you will lose appetite, right? I will not I, say I will yes. not say the can I will not say the name the yes, name country. Yes, okay. But you know, I remember in India. And what, what you mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know what's 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 uh, the other's experience in India, but I experienced one. It's so hard for me because I have a lot of, um, you know, um, what they call it allergy. Mm-hmm. Mm, I remember food allergy. Uh, yeah, food allergy. I I need to go vegetarian oh my because God. I cannot eat chicken. Mm-mm. So when I'm in India, some of the food and uh, most of the food is veggie, but it's. With the herbs, mm-hmm. so heat in the tummy, you cannot, you cannot perform at all. I don't know about what about you, Brian? Like in <laughs> Southeast country, right? You know they have a weird culture. Like in the, uh, Indonesia, they cannot start with ayam penyet, bakso. Mm-hmm. So, well, in your experience, what do you what do you experience? In terms of food, I think Asians okay lah, except for India lah. I think because that time they, during that Commonwealth Games kan, New Delhi, they advise us not to drink, not to buy simply like even the mineral water pun tak boleh beli dekat luar. Yes. So better take food inside the game village lah itself. Mm. So it's more, uh, it's more safe, it's more clean kan. Um, and then I think also if you go to the Western countries kan, so the food there it's a Tak ngam lah, tak ngam dengan tekak lah. Like, right? Sebab, yeah. sebab they always, you know, eat this bread dengan, you know, some sort of no like rice. sausage, daging. So it's a bit, it's a bit hard to adapt lah. But then you still have to eat again. Yes. Mm. yes. But one of the interesting story, maybe I want to share here, yang pasal supplements lah, nutritionist lah. Because last time, like when we, when we were young, we always, uh, they always, uh, after, you know, after body checking, and they always give us this supplement, uh, vitamin C, uh, you know this uh, other supplement, macam ensure. So it's it's like when you are young, right? You're not supposed to take uh, too much of uh, apa ni, vitamin C in your tablets, kan? But mm. then you are young, it's 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 nice. So you always take <laughs> more true. than you know, Mm-mm. more than yeah, more than your but your your body needed lah. So <laughs> I think. I think the teacher needs should you know sometimes uh, monitor this athlete lah, especially the young one lah. Yeah, we should. Yeah. 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 the vitamin C and all. But in in the state level also they don't know how to, you know, take the right supplement. Mm-hmm. Supplement is vitamin, but in in terms of whey protein, mm-hmm. and then when it comes to business minded people, they they came up yes. with a cool 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 name right? Yes. Brief. Eyes, so it's like yes, I, I yeah. think we can have another topic on supplements. Yeah, it's like we can talk whole drugs. day. <laughs> <laughs> halal drug in sport. Yes. So um, we're gonna heading back to the commercial break. Take five. We're gonna see you again after this. Basics. Red one, back to basics. All right, 
right, that is very interesting um, point, uh, Bell and Brian. So we are almost at the end. So I'm going to ask them last question. Um, maybe Bell, can, can you um, tell me what is your hope for this uh, SEA Games? I mean, like, what's my, your my advice? Yeah, advice, my expectation. Advice. Okay. So um, for maybe for our athletes, uh, able body and also para athletes who will be going to Cambodia, uh, just take good care of yourself. Okay. Um, well, I'm a charm thing about education. <laughs> Don't bring someone. <laughs> bring yeah, your someone. Can can can. No problem. Okay. Just uh, just remember. Okay. Uh, have you have to know that the weather in Cambodia is like literally very hot. Okay. So please hydrate yourself properly. Okay, bring bottles. Okay, jangan pergi sana nanti tak ada air botol. Okay, bring water and then please hydrate yourself. And also, uh, like what I mentioned just now, uh, food culture may be different. So maybe uh, you can contact your nutritionist and your dietitians and then just ask for advice. Okay, about the food culture there and then what you should do, what you should bring. Okay, and also um, another thing is the food hygiene as well. Okay. Mm. Janganlah nanti pergi sana then you simply makan and then ah oh, sakit perut oh my god food poisoning no please don't please don't okay don't because of something that you can avoid then tiba tiba because of that affect yeah. your performance yeah mm. so yeah I think that's all from me just take good care of yourself and then enjoy your game in Cambodia okay thank you Bell very nice how about you Brian do you have um, any advice to the Maybe new talent who, who will be competing in SEA Games this year? Uh, I think to all athletes, I just want to wish them uh, all the best. So hopefully they can bring back you know, all the medals that yang dia dah target lah. So hopefully <laughs> they can do their best. And to, you know, to uh, diving fans, because I'm a, you know, <laughs> come from diving team. So hopefully they can support all the gold medals. Yeah. But very unfortunate lah this time because I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, they only um, I mean it's it's only four events for for um, uh, for diving this time. So because last time we have more events, so you can get more medals because Malaysia is also one of the powerhouse in 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 Southeast Asia. Yes. So to all divers, especially I heard that the new, um, uh, new new. New faces will, you know, will uh, compete this time. So I hope they can, you know, trust their training process and hopefully they can get the gold medals for Malaysia. Thank you so much, uh, Bell and Brian, uh, for today. I'm still nervous because he is my sport idol. <laughs> <laughs> so we will be coming with more episodes after this with special guests. I want you guys to stay tuned with Sina Daily Updates. And we also going to have special contest with a big prize win. Make sure stay tuned with Sina Daily. See you next episode in Sport Matters. I'm your host, Adila J. Sam. Goodbye.